Alright, so in this tutorial I thought we could cover um, if statements, unless, and cases. Now, we already know what if and unless does, but there's some more things to it besides what I have taught so far. So, I'm just going to make a method here real quick. I'm just going to call it method because I really can't be bothered naming anything else. Now we can go, no, we can just make a local variable here for one. For now, we can just call it that. that. How about true? True. Um, and now you have if statements, and you can go if local is equal, equal to true, then do this code. Else if local is equal to false, um, do this code. And then you have else, and then end. So that's the whole branch of the if statement. It's like a conditional branch for eventing. You can have as many um, do this, else do this, and then inside of there you can go conditional branch here, and then yeah, it kind of works like that. Except you can have as many as you want in this case. So this is obviously not going to work as I intended to. So I'm going to change this to uh, 10, like I had it before. So if locals equal equal to 10, do this code. Else if locals equal equal to 100. Uh, do this code. So we can go in here. We can go Mr. Box underscore P. Uh, first check was passed. Else if uh, second check was passed. Mm. Um, second check was passed. Okay. Else um, message box underscore P. Uh, Neither were passed. All right, and you know, let's make an argument. We'll make an argument. Local, and we'll get rid of that. Now we'll just go method. Um, we'll go ten for the first one. So what's going to happen is we're going to pass in ten as an argument for a method here. And it's going to go into local. It's going to check if local is equal equal to ten, which it will be. Then first check was passed. Otherwise, we will then go method uh, 20, and then we'll go method 100. So it's going to do the following. It's going to go if locals equal equal to 10, then first check was passed. Else if locals equal equal to 100, the second check was passed. Otherwise, neither were passed. And we could still do the same um, boolean operators that we learned from before. So we can go and, or we could do or. So I could put 20 in there, and that means the first check would get passed twice. And I can also put 200 in here too, so... Oh, local. Local equal equal to 20, and uh, local... Yep. Yeah. Alright, so it's going to pass the first check both times this one. And then when it comes to this method here, it's going to then pass uh, the second one. Alright, and I'll also put method here 200, so you know it's passed that one too. And then in the middle, I'll put method equal to uh, 5. So we're going to have first check, first check, uh, neither than second check, and second check. So we'll just run it. First check was passed. First check was passed. Neither were passed. The second check was passed, and then second check. And then neither. I don't know what that was called more than a few times. But okay. Um, Alright, we can get rid of that now. So, oh no, okay. now we can also move on to the um, the unless. And now we already know what unless does. It's do this code unless this is true. So unless uh, local equal equal to uh, 10 or local equal equal to uh, 200, then message box underscore p uh, the check was not true. Okay, and then end. And also, you can also put an else with an unless as well. So I can put else there, but I can't really put else if because it's kind of not running off unless. So unless locals equal to ten or locals equal to two hundred, the check was not true, which means run the message box. Else, if either of these were true, then don't run this. Run this instead. What we're doing here is the above was true. The above was true. Run it again. 
I see I spelled it wrong. The above was true. Check was not true. Check was not true. Check was not true. And then the above was true. I'm guessing those other times that it runs is probably down here somewhere. But okay. I can just put A there and I'll change that. Okay, so we know what unless and if does and what else statement does here as well. Now we can move on to another keyword and it's called case. Now what you can do for cases, you simply put in case and then a variable next to it. So I can go case local and then put an end down here. Now you simply type in when here. And this is what it does. When you say when, you then put in uh, a condition afterwards. So when 10, uh, message box underscore p, local was 10. Or argument, actually. Argument was 10. Was. And I can do this as many times as I want. So I can go when 10. I can keep doing that for as many times as I feel like. So when 10, uh, 25, 100, 20, uh, 5, 100, and 200. 200. And then for the exact same, it's just like with the um, unless statement and the if statement, I can also put an else in here. Else, uh, none were true. Okay, so 20, put 20 there, 20, then 5, then 100, and then 200. Then we're true, and I can go A method, and put in one that isn't going to be true, which would be 11. Then we'll run it, and we'll see what happens. Argument was 10, argument was 20, 5, 100, 200. None were true. Alright. So that's what case does, and it's like a nicer way of doing an if statement, because if I was to write this as an if statement, it's going to look pretty ugly. So we'll just go if local equal, uh, spell it right, um, else if locals equal to Alright, and this is basically the difference between um, case and if. See, this one looks a lot nicer than this, so in my opinion anyway. So that's why I like to use cases when I have more, when I have to check more than just a couple of things. So that's what cases are used for, and it's the exact same for instance variables as well. So if I did have an instance variable, I can put at local, even though that's not really what I would call it. Alright, and it also works for globals as well, so even if I had that, that would work. Alright, so all you have to do for cases is just go when 10 when 20 if I'm going to have this as a string I can go when s argument was s so I can even put the method here s nope s and I can give it a whirl and argument was s okay so really that's oh what the hell derp 200. Yeah, anyway. So, that's all you have to worry about for uh, cases and if statements and unlesses. They, they generally use the exact same, you just have to know the difference between them. And as long as you do, you sh you will be set for a lot of um, checking in your code, because that's how you make your code dynamic, by using if statements. And if you don't use if statements, then your program or your game or your code is going to run the same pretty much every single time it's used. And that's kind of not really what you want. Okay, so as long as you know the difference between them, you are all good.